They've made a grave for him in the cemetery of their home village of Tiltagaliai in Lithuania. Dinora Urbanienia's father went missing somewhere in Siberia after he was deported to a camp by Stalin's henchmen. In April 1940, she saw him for the last time. The children, they were all crying terribly, and they ran to their fathers. The women wanted to go to their husbands, but the soldiers just pushed them away. Dinora takes us to her dacha and shows us the few photos from that time. Here the memories are so fresh, it seems like it all happened just yesterday. Dinora, her mother and her little brother were separated from their father at the train station. They crossed the Soviet Union in cattle cars, trucks and on foot. Thousands of kilometers later, they reached the Altai region of Siberia. Her little brother, Arutis, died along the way. They lived in barracks in the forest. Her mother and the other women were forced to do hard labor. Hunger was the worst part of their ordeal. The first winter was particularly harsh. There were blizzards and the bread deliveries couldn't get through. We didn't get our ration of 200 grams a day. I counted the potatoes, 63. That's all the two of us had for a whole month. What exactly the Soviet authorities accused her parents of and why they had to leave their village is still a mystery to Dinora. She presumes they came under suspicion because as teachers they belonged to the Lithuanian upper class. At a museum in Vilnius, historians have collected documents and other artifacts from the time. After the Soviet Union seized control of Lithuania in 1940, over 200,000 Lithuanians, more than 10% of the population, were sent to Siberia in several waves. Deportation often followed interrogations and brutal torture in the basement of the building. The first to be deported were all the Lithuanian public officials and anyone who had anything to do with the Lithuanian independence movement. Then they started on the rest, for example, teachers or farmers who refused to join collectives. They all had one thing in common. They were all accused of being enemies of the state. Dinora Urbaniena was considered an enemy of the state until the Soviet Union was dissolved. Since then, her daughter and parliamentary representative, Raza Yuknevichena, have been campaigning to get the Russian government to pay compensation to Dinora and the other survivors. Back in the early 1990s, the politician says they were able to talk to Russia about the crimes of the communist period, but those days are gone. They don't uh, take care of those people. They suffered a lot during uh, uh, that uh, period. Now it's more and more uh, Stalin is back, like Stalin is back with the monuments, with movies, with the memories saying, uh, false memories saying that uh, that was the leader who built the statehood. Even the Labour Party that was founded by a Russian is critical of Russia's position today. Its chairman, Sorunas Birutis, thinks the possibility of compensation is illusory. It's not the, the, the matter of money. It's the most important to acknowledge the history and evaluate correctly it not to deny the occupation, not to deny the, this uh, consequences, uh, what we ha had. Deserted farms are still in evidence, abandoned when farmers were deported during the Soviet period. Traces of the past can still be seen everywhere. 
The fact that powerful neighbouring Russia seems unwilling to acknowledge its past is something Dinora Ubonyena considers ominous. I still think of the deportation every day, but I don't want to hate the Russians. Hate won't bring back my father and brother. My only wish is that nothing like that ever happens again. Dinora Obonyena and her mother made it back to Lithuania at the end of the 1940s. And this is where Dinora later wants to be laid to rest, beside her mother. <laughs> 